JT Shaver here with New Layer, and today I want to show you how to set up lighting to drastically enhance the quality of your videos. There's nearly infinite possibilities when it comes to lighting, but the tips I'll share in this video can be applied to almost any setup. The first light is going to be my key or main light. The key light is what illuminates the main subject of your video, and there's one basic rule that you want to follow in almost every case. You want your main light source to basically be as large as possible. This will give you softer shadows and more flattering light because it evens out skin texture texture and just makes people look their best. There are times, especially in filmmaking, where hard light makes more sense, but when we're talking about interviews and talking head videos, the softer the better. You might be surprised at just how big of diffusion is sometimes used. For example, in those masterclass style videos, sometimes it's eight by eight feet or even bigger. I'm using the Aperture 300X with the Light Dome SE. The Light Dome SE has a 33 and a half inch diameter diffusion panel, which makes it relatively soft. I went with Aperture lights for this entire setup because of their Citus Link mobile app control, so I can do everything just sitting right here, but you can do this setup with less expensive lights. A good starting point for positioning your key light is 45 degrees above and 45 degrees to the side of your subject. This will cast some nice shadows on the face of your subject and add some depth to your frame. If you put the key light in line with the camera, you're going to get a much flatter look. I'm working in a really small and pretty oddly shaped space. In a perfect world, I'd get the key light more off to the side, but it still looks good as is. You can do some experimenting of your own with position and light color, but I'm going to set mine to 4000 Kelvin and set my camera's white balance to match. The second light is going to be our accent or background light. I'm gonna keep things simple and just use one light in a lamp in our background as an accent light, and it's also gonna serve as a practical light. A practical light is one that appears in the actual frame of your video, and it can cast light on the scene or just serve as an additional design element for your set. I'm using the Aperture B7C, which is a bulb designed specifically for filmmaking, but again, you can use cheaper bulbs here. The big thing to watch out for with LED bulbs not designed for filmmaking making is that a lot of them will strobe or flicker and there's really no way to tell which ones do that until after you buy them. The other options are to buy non-LED lights or to use something like the Aperture MC pocket light. Before I got the Aperture bulbs, I used the MC with the silicone diffuser in a lampshade all the time. Sometimes it is hard to get them mounted in the light shade, but the MC is small enough that you can usually stick the diffuser on it and just balance it right on top of the socket. If you want to take your video seriously and honestly just save a lot of time and frustration, I highly recommend and the B7C. I actually did a full review on that if you want to see all the cool things that these bulbs can do. So I've got the lamp in the background and I set the color temperature to 3200 Kelvin and that's to kind of match the warm and cozy feel of this room. Then I'll just adjust the brightness so it's not under or overexposed. If you're not using a light where you can adjust the brightness then you can just turn your background lamp on and change your camera's exposure and then adjust the key light from there. I only have the Aperture 300X set to 3%, so that just shows how bright this light can get. The third and final light in this setup is gonna be the hair or rim light. This will highlight the edges of your subject to help them pop out and add even more depth. I've got the Aperture MC above and behind me out of frame, with the silicone diffuser on aimed at my head and shoulders. Another cool thing about this light is that it's magnetic, which works perfectly in my case. To get it in the right spot, I have it magnetically stuck to a little C-clamp on a piece of wood on the wall. I wanted a pretty natural look, so I set this light to 3200 Kelvin as well, so it's kind of motivated by the bulb in the background. If you want a more stylized look, you can change the color of any of these lights, and I'll show you an example of that a little bit later. In some cases, you'll want to add a fill light on the opposite side of your subject's face as the key light. This will just help fill in or brighten any extra dark shadows that you don't want to be there. This can be another light or something as simple as a bounce board or a 5-in-1 reflector. The contrast between the highlights and the shadows is really personal preference, so it's totally up to you. So here is just the rim light all by itself. Here's the rim light and the background light. Here's the key light and the background light without the rim light. And here's the final image versus the original scene lit with only house lights. Again, I kept the color temperatures of all these lights relatively close to get a more natural look, but there are some changes you can make to get a more stylized look. The key light should always be white balanced properly, but the background, accent, and rim lights can be any color that you want. So if I make the rim light the opposite color of my background light, it adds a little bit of color contrast. And if I change the background bulb to blue and my rim light to pink, I get a totally different look. 
There's plenty of other things that go into a good looking setup like set design, focal length, and framing. But in my opinion, lighting is hands down the best investment to improve the visual quality of your videos. Now, I am using about $1,500 worth of equipment here because that's what I've built up to, but I wanna emphasize that you can get this exact same look with a couple hundred dollars of lights or less. I'm talking all the way down to regular household light bulbs and bed sheets as diffusers. Dedicated video lights do make things a lot easier and quicker, but I wanna encourage you to create content even if you have minimal gear. I know it's possible because I've been there too. With that said, my favorite thing about this setup is that I can control all of these lights sitting right here without ever having to get up. Before you go, leave a comment and let me know if this video helped you and I'd love to see some before and afters if you have those. Links to the gear that I use is in the description if you want to check those out yourself. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.